Now in today's News Daily video, I'll be speaking about the latest reports surrounding Ross Barkley and a potential loan move to West Ham. I'll be speaking about the latest reports coming out from France in regards to a young player the club are close to signing from Paris Saint-Germain. I'll be speaking about another French young talent by the name of Bapakari Zamari and us and Man United battling it out to try and sign the player. And to end things, I'll be speaking about the latest reports surrounding Milinkovic Savic and a club bid from us. Before I get into anything you guys, smash that like button, help me get over 2,000 likes for today's video and on that point because I don't have any more time to waste, we get straight into the first story for today and that's in regards to the latest story coming out from Paris Saint-Germain in regards to the young teenage sensation we're trying to sign. His name goes by Kaz Ruiz Attil, he is a Moroccan born, French born player that Paris Saint-Germain did sign from Barcelona but it's looking like he's leaving Paris Saint-Germain to sign for us. Claude Makélélé is currently in Paris right now negotiating with Paris Saint-Germain who aren't too happy or impressed that they're missing out on a talent that they only signed a few seasons ago. And at this point in time, you guys, it seems the only hold up from this deal is agreeing the transfer fee to sign the player on a permanent. Is it really a surprise though? Because just a year ago, I think, RMC Sport released another story in regards to Kazatil basically being a bit unsettled at Paris Saint-Germain. So it seems like he's been engineering a move away from Paris Saint-Germain for a long time now and when it comes to finding out more information about the player it is quite difficult he's 17 years old he plays in midfield and he plays as a deep line playmaker in the pivot you know the type of guy that you know connects the whole team controls the game keeps possession plays passes between the lines and helps turn defense into attack he seems to be a player that has very nice close control plays with his head up he has good spatial awareness and he always knows when to play that good angled pass and the weight of his passes seems to be quite nice too. Again, this is only the eye test from a guy in me that doesn't have my scouting license so I'm not an expert but you guys understand that I've got a deep appreciation for football, scouting and analysing players so I try to do my best. But of course this news is big and it is very interesting. Could this tell us some more information about the club's plans for the loan army because at this point in time we don't know what's happening right now. We know that with new regulations from FIFA, gone are the days where we can loan out 40 players on loan. That's not going to happen anymore. So instead of that it seems like there's going to be a different strategy when it comes to focusing on key talents that can have that time and attention that they need. He fits the mould of player that the club's academy likes to have. And maybe for the youth teams right now, we are missing out on that conductor in midfield. We've had players in a similar mould currently with Billy Gilmore and back in the day with Charlie Colquitt. And that's what I like about the academy. We just don't sign players for no reason based on their talent. They need to fit what the club are trying to build. They need to fit the system. They need to complement the players. And that's the best way to do things. So for me, you guys, it's very interesting and exciting to learn more about this story as it develops. I wonder what it means for other youth players like your Andrews and your Gilmores. And when it comes to deals like this, I'm forever going to trust the club's scouting department and Claude Makélélé. So let's see what happens here, you guys. And on that point, we move on to the second story for today. And that's in regards to Ross Barkley and a potential loan move to West Ham. Now, reports coming out from the English media are stating that David Morris is looking at being reunited with Ross Barkley by bringing him back to West Ham. Now, if you guys didn't realise, David Moyes gave Ross Barkley his debut all those years back in the day. And even though the reports do say that the club aren't interested in letting Barkley leave right now, would that be the best decision? We know that with a club like West Ham, they have more money than sense. Barkley knows that if he stays at this club, his game time is only going to get reduced week in, week out. And so far, he's not very high in the pecking order. If I was Barkley... I'm thinking about the Euros, I'm thinking about wanting to represent my national team and I would force a move to West Ham to play week in week out and get that consistent game time. Could we survive without Barkley? Well, I think we could. Of course it would be quite risky but I think those risks would be worth it when you consider the money we're bringing in for the player, when you consider that if we sell him before the Euros as well, we could sell him for a premium. And when you realise that, for example, Pulisic can play as a number 10, as a backup to Mason Mount, when you realise that Ruben might come back at some point in the second half of the season, when you realise we have a midfield of Kante, Jorginho, Cover, Mount, and maybe Gilmore as well, well, I think that until this season ends, we could risk 
surviving without Barkley. And I really mean it, you guys. I mean, I know his last game was pretty decent, but we see that performance once a blue moon when we're lucky enough to play against teams that give us the space between the lines in their half. I mean, it's the Premier League. Teams work so hard to close down spaces. And for most games I've seen Barkley in, he struggled in games like that. I get the impression that he's quite popular and well-liked, but from a pure cold business point of view, I think it's best to sell the player, if I'm being honest, you guys. We can't expect too much end product from the player because over the past few seasons, when have we ever consistently relied upon that from the player? It hasn't happened and realistically, it never will. So on that point, you guys, move on to the third story for today. And that's in regards to more reports coming out from Sky Sports this time in regards to Lil's young 20-year-old midfielder, Sumari. Now, they're saying that a lot of clubs have actually come out from the race to sign the player. That's clubs like Arsenal and Real Madrid, for example, meaning that us and Man United are the only two clubs currently in the running to sign the player. Now, Lil have made things very clear and concrete they are not looking to sell the player until after that game against Paris Saint-Germain. That means that if you want to sign Samari, you need to wait until after the 26th. And it seems like if you want to sign Samari, it's going to be a pretty easy, straightforward deal because Lil are very happy to sell. Now, I'll get my thoughts and opinions. And the big question is for me, what does this tell us about our midfields? Now, in the second story I spoke about Ross Barkley, if Ross Barkley left, is Samari a potential replacement for the player? Who knows? Samari's young. And because of that, it means that if we're signing him, I can imagine that we do have a long-term plan for the player. Could he be an eventual successor to Jorginho or Kova or even N'Golo Kante? Who knows? He's a style of player that does operate in the pivot. Defensively, he's very good. Not too bad. You know, lots of good ball retention, lots of good ball recoveries wins his tackles quickly and sharply, and is very good on the transition with his ability to carry the ball in the final third, play passes between the lines, and his decent passing range. When I look at him, he's the style of midfield player that Lampard wants and Lampard likes. Could a potential signing imply that we might tend to use a three-man midfield more as the season draws to an end, or or could we remain with a two-man midfield, with Samari acting as a deputy to either a cover, Jorginho, or Kante? I can see why midfield enforcement could help us right now. You know, I know some people think I'm really harsh, but I just don't really rate Ross Barkley as much. I don't think we can rely on too much from the player as the season goes on. Maybe Lampard has seen this too, and maybe that's why we're in the market for another midfield player. So his signing is going to have a lot of big questions in regards to the future of our midfield, and how it's going to shape out and look in the future. Could I envision a Ruben, Samari, Kansei, Kova and Mason midfield? Yeah, potentially. Or does this imply that maybe a player like a Jorginho or Kansei might decide to leave? Maybe they have other clubs interested in them. Maybe these are precautionary measures that the club are taking now to safeguard themselves for the future. There's so much to think about, so much to hypothesize about that um, I think it's best now to move on to the next story for today. And that's in regards to another midfield player we're being linked with. His name is Belinkovic Savage. He plays for Lazio and his price is rumored to be around 80 million euros to sign the player. Now reports back in Italy are suggesting that we've turned our attention to Belinkovic for this window. <sighs> Very ambitious if you're asking me. Reports from Gazeta della Sport stated that we sent scouts to watch his last game against Napoli and it seems like the club scouts are really working overtime these days. It seems like they're all across Europe looking at this player, that player, that player, that it can't all be for nothing. This season Milinkovic does have four goals and five assists which is not too bad. You know Lazio are a pretty decent team, a very good first 11 but I've said it before and I'll say it again. If I'm comparing Milinkovic and Ruben, Ruben is the better player. Now, the only thing that Milinkovic really has a big advantage over him comes from aerial balls. But other than that one component in his game, I feel like Ruben is just the better player. And even though with Ruben, there is some doubts in regards to his injuries, I think it's worth persisting with the player and really supporting and backing him. 
Guys like Blinkovic, midfield players that play that box to box role cost a ton of money in the modern game. Look at your Goretzkas, your Milinkovic's, your Pogba's. These guys cost at least 50, 60 mil minimum. And when Savage's goal returns seem to be slipping every single season, could he end up being an expensive gamble to pay? Ruben's ability to break the lines using his dribbling ability, as well as his finishing ability as well, and his ability to time his runs inside the box is going to exponentially improve our midfield more than anything that I think Milinkovic Savic could bring to this team. It is going to be interesting to see the club's targets that get narrowed down in the end. Now, I think it's obvious that we do need attacking wide enforcement. I need to see a massive big money bid for Jaden Sancho in the summer. That's a guarantee. That That is something that needs to happen. So I don't really see us signing a Sancho and then spending another 80 million to sign Milinkovic. Not in the same window. And not when we have guys like Mason Mount who's young and only going to improve. And not when we have Ruben who's about to return back to the team as well. It makes no sense. But anyway, you guys, that's going to be me for today. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. See you guys in a bit.